So th that's a good example of a good problem for the final. Because it, it's, it's really combining the two things together, right? It combines Nash convection and radiation. So. so this plate, he said it's insulated from the back. So the only thing that we'll be receiving is the radiation from the sun. And he said this is uh, 600. What per meter square? So that's the energy input to it. And he can lose by Q radiation, and he can lose heat by Q convection, natural convection. And he's asking about what is the T equilibrium. So what is the T equilibrium? That's the temperature he will reach at steady state. It's the temperature at which you will not get any hotter or any colder after that. All right? So what is the equation? that will give me that T temperature. What equation will, how does it look like, the equation that I can pull T out of it? So this is an important way to think about solving the problem. So someone will say, well, it has Q convection, Q radiation, let's, let's me just count, let's me just start by Q convection. Here's Q radiation. But really, a smart way to solve those problems is to think from the end. Tell yourself, where is the final answer is coming from? What's the equation? And then look at that equation and say, so what do I need to know about this equation? And then drive the solution backward all the way. All right? So what is that equation that will give me Q, sorry, that will give me Q equilibrium? Anyone? Q huh? But I would say not Q total, I would say Q input equal Q output first. At steady state, Q input equal Q output. And what Q input is the sun and Q output is radiation to the sky plus convection to the air. All right? So that is the equation that, that you'd say at steady state, Q sun, actually, how about Q sun? would be uh, Q by radiation and plus Q plus, con plus Q convection. Q radiation is, uh, we'll have to open the tables and figure out what is the best relation that will calculate the radiation between the that plate and the sky. And for Q convection, how do we calculate Q convection? Anyone? H A delta T and, and that delta T would have the T surface that I'm looking for. So really what's required is TS, right? So that's the TS we are trying to find out. So TS minus T air plus, this is Q uh, convection, plus Q radiation. And if we open those table for infinite cylinder and two infinite uh, sphere, the, the first one was a body surrounded by a huge enclosure around it. And if you remember, I told you this is perfect for someone radiating to the whole sky or someone radiating to the whole building around him. So we will use this. It's epsilon, AS, my multiply by sigma, T surface to power four minus T sky or T surrounding to power four. So writing this equation, that's already three points out of 10. All right. So now, yes, James. Um, what if you assume it's a black body and calculate the Right. So if we assume, so James' question is, what about we assume it's a black body? Well, if you read the problem, he said this thing has epsilon of 0.98. A black body had an epsilon of one. That's not a black body. All right. You have epsilon and you have alpha. We have absorptivity and he has uh, emissivity. So he's not a black body radiation. Right? Meanwhile, you are talking about how about reflectivity. You are asking about the reflectivity of that surface. Well, it's probably what's remaining of the 0.98. So remember we said for any surface rho plus alpha plus 
plus what? Equal one. Does anyone remember? When the radiation hit a surface, rho plus alpha plus tau equal one. Tau is transmissivity, rho is reflectivity, and alpha is absorptivity. Radiation coming, some get absorbed, some get reflected, and the sum will go through. Of course, the sum will go through, that's if you are glass or a plastic sheet. But if you are a, a, a collector plate, a metal plate painted black, how much radiation will go through you? So tau is zero. So it's either you reflect or absorb. So obviously rho is 0.02. So now what, what do you want with rho? Why are you asking about rho? What do you want to do with it? So we we just really care about the alpha. So when it comes to the input radiation, so the, those 600 watt per meter squared, or 600 watt multiplied by 1.2 times 0.8, that will be the total watt coming on the plate. Will all of it get absorbed? No. Some will get reflected, right? And the amount that will be absorbed, the amount that will be Q sun is the incident radiation multiplied by the area multiplied by alpha. Right? That Q sun or the, the incident radiation is 600 multiplied by 1.2 multiplied by 0.8 what be meter square multiplied by meter square. This is how much is falling on the plate. How much of this will be input really go to the plate? Only the alpha. Only the 0.98. And 0.02 get absorbed. Sorry, get reflected. All right? So now what's the plan to get TS? Obviously, we have to find everything else in this equation so that we can get this TS. Right? So what's missing? T sky is given. Sigma, that's the Stephen Boltzmann constant. 5.67, 10 to minus 8. Epsilon of the plate, that's given. It's 0.98, and, and I'm telling you, in practical collectors, they don't make alpha the same as epsilon. They make alpha really big, because they want this thing to grab every single beam of sun falling on, and they make epsilon very, very small, so that that part, the radiation going back to the sky, become very small. So the thing just grab the heat and wouldn't really lose it. So you become really, really hot, and he sent pass it to the water when the water goes through it. And to kill the convection, what would you do to kill the convection? For an actual, if this was an actual solar heater on top of your roof, and you want your water shower to be as hot as it can, so you don't want Q convection to be significant. How do you do? What do you do to kill Q convection? Lower the H, and but that's not in your hand, right? You lower the H. That's you. You. That's if the air is moving. Uh, really slowly, right? Right, you put a glass plate on top of the, the plate. So you surround this by a glass cover like this. So the glass will let the radiation go through, but the air, the hot air that would like to get hot and leave and be replaced by cold air and keep taking our heat away from us this way, he wouldn't be able to do this because that air is trapped in a box, a glass box. All right. But anyway, in this problem, we don't have the, the glass cover. And actually, sometimes the collector is exactly like this, just a plate without any cover. When, when they don't worry that much about the losses, why they wouldn't worry that much? Because they don't want the plate to get that hot anyway. So for example, swimming pool. So if you want to heat your swimming pool, you don't want the water to boil in the swimming pool. Right? So you know if it's just like, you know, from 60, it's 80, you are happy. Great. Let's swim in 80 degree water. That's perfect. Right? So they wouldn't really put a cover on it. They just leave it as it is. All right. So. Let's go for, obviously, the Q convection, that's what's missing.
or the H that's what's really missing the H so this is H by natural convection so I bet the H will be function of it will be part of the Nusselt number and Nusselt number will be function of Rayleigh number right so for natural convection the on a horizontal plate the Nusselt number is 0.15 really number to power one third and this equation is worth three point so that's six out of ten just writing those two lines all right and to get the really number I need so the really number is j beta uh, ts minus t infinity l characteristic length to power three new square rental and this equation is worth one point well I need those properties on top of the fact that also the Nusselt is uh, the H L C over K so I need K over there too so to get those properties we need a temperature to evaluate them at what temperature characterize the natural convection TS T air film temperature right we have to, f to have the film temperature so that we can get those properties you got the question Is it the range of the Rayleigh number? Yeah. Right, so we will we will calculate the Rayleigh number and based on that we will pick the right form. So we get plus three. So we get plus three five. Well if you just say the Nusselt's function of Rayleigh number, that shows you that you are using the equation for natural convection. You get three points for getting the the equation for natural convection. An equation, not the equation, an equation for natural convection. All right. So we, we need a property, and we said the property should, all those properties need to be at TS or T air or T film, probably, right? Problem with T film is, I don't know TS. So how can I get my film temperature? Right, so we have to guess, and the smarter you guess, the less time you actually have to iterate. You wouldn't really have to iterate if you guess right. If you guess perfectly right, you don't have to iterate. And in the exam, if you have a trial and error problem, and, and you guess really close, don't worry, don't go again. Right? So I, I understand that in the final exam, you don't really have that much time to iterate. So the fact that you just said, let's do trial and error, and you assume a temperature, and then you write one line saying, well, I think it's close enough, that, that's good enough for me, all right? But I expect to see the, the logic, you know, that you are not just saying TS is 65. No, you would say assume TS is 65, and then you end up calculating TS to be 95, and you would say, well, probably it's going to be affecting the results. One could reiterate again until this settle down something along those lines okay so one don't assume there is no try and error second don't kill yourself over the try and error right if you have the time iterate once if you don't have the time just say I will iterate more if to get this close and if you again if you guess really uh, smart you wouldn't really have to trade that much so a, a stupid guess would be how much how much the ETA right so because we know that it cannot be TA right it has to be higher than TA so don't assume 25 yeah or higher even I mean it, it, you, you need to, to touch your car in, in the summer to tell what the the initial guess should be but it, it probably the car gets really hot in the summer right so anyway so you just assume uh, a firm temperature so assume uh, T film 
which is Ts plus T infinity over 2. And so that is, he, I guess he assumes 65 plus 25 over 2. So that's 45. What happened? So that's 45. And so he will get uh, the key. 0 0.026 watt per meter. Oh, what per meter C and he get the uh, new 1.75 10 to minus 5 meter square per second and you get the parental 0.72 and you get the beta 1 over TF and it's 0, 0, 3, 1 K minus 1 and so we got all the property we are missing one more thing the that length scale because it's here and it's also in the Nusselt number and so that length scale is area s over the perimeter and so 1.2 multiplied by 0.8 over 2 1.2 plus 0.8 this is a cross-section area 0.8 1.2 and the perimeter is basically adding this to this to this to this. So, what is the characteristic lens? 0.24 meter. Right, and so we are ready then to calculate the really number. So this characteristic lens is worth one point. And, and that guessing thing, assuming that's worth one point. Right. And so they really become 4, 10 to power 7, and based on this, then the Nusselt become 51, and the H is 5.78 watt per meter square degree C, and the that was the last piece we need. So now even with, with HS, sorry, even with H in the equation, do you see any other problem? Right, TS in two spots. And one of them is? Not one of them is in Kelvin. We probably have to put it in Kelvin in, in all of them so that <coughs> we it's the same temperature. So this doesn't mind if you make it Kelvin minus Kelvin, since this has to be in Kelvin. Right. So because the, the TS in the two sides, it, that make it, and also T to power 4, that make it nonlinear equation. So you'll not be able to pull TS out of it immediately. But what you have to do is basically put TS on one side and put the, the other in the other side. And you assume TS, you calculate TS. You assume TS, you calculate the TS. And so what I'm saying is that TS would be here like this, and then TS to R4 with a bunch of stuff. A multiplied by B, you know, some, all the other constants on one side. And so you assume TS, and you calculate TS. And then you put it again, the same thing that you calculated. And if this does not converge, what do you do? So you assume 50. Then it end up being... 35. You put 35, it ends up being 5. You put 5, it ends up being minus 200. You put minus 200, it's minus 5,000. Obviously, it's diverging. What do you do? No. <laughs> huh? Right. So, what do you mean by going the opposite direction? I, I didn't do anything. I just assumed a temperature that sounds reasonable to me. I assume it's 65. So if you assume 65 and it's diverging, and that would mean you can assume lower, right? No, that means that this equation needs to be flipped the other way. Okay. So the equation sometime, when you're looking for the solution, you need to cast it the other way. <coughs> right?
right? Do you remember 3013? There was something along solving a linear equation in the course? No? Anyway, when, when it's diverging like this, it's obviously that this is the one that needs to be calculated. So it will be TS, and it's the, the fourth square of everything else, including the other one. And so you assume this one, and you calculate the other one from it. Then the equation would probably converge from this direction. Okay? So any nonlinear equation will have the unknown in different places. Sometimes two, sometimes even three. Right? And so for that iteration to work, if the first format or the first format didn't work, you flip it to get the other one. So at the end of the day, TS was, and that's worth one point, TS was 64.2 degree. And so you can see why he assumed T S to be 65. He assumed it's 65 because he know the answer is 64. So, of course, you don't really know before you start. And you probably, so again, a really wrong choice is to assume 25. That's the air. You know it should be hotter. Otherwise, the air will not cool it. And how is it supposed to get rid of all the sun radiation? The air needs to cool it. Right? 10 degrees of this extra information we get the... No, the 10 degree of the sky is what used here. So he doesn't radiate to the air. The air convects, but he radiates through the air to the dome, to the outer space, or to the actual sky. Right? Yes, James. I, guys, stop. I can't hear. Say that again. So if you are asking, how did we come up with this formula? Yeah. So again, you can, any, any radiation problem, you can solve from scratch. And that scratch is, here is a black body radiation, sigma t to power 4. Here is the surface resistance to radiation, which was 1 minus epsilon over area epsilon of that surface. Whether that surface is the plate or me or the wall. And then I have my j leaving, and that j now corresponds to the rest of the or communicate with the rest of the world. In this problem, what is the rest of the world? It's the sky, right? And so that sky, you basically find out what is the, the F12 to the sky. So what's what area one, F12 to the sky? One. And, and this, the whole thing will yield exactly the same formula as that table in, in the radiation chapter where he said, when you have a small body, area one, very small compared to area two, and area two is completely surrounding you. Exactly, like a really a small body in a big surrounding. And I told you when I gave you this line that this particular one apply also to someone radiating to the whole sky. I bet I even said a solar collector radiating back to the sky. But anyway, if you have a small thing surrounded by a huge thing, this is the formula that will come out and if you don't like it, or you, if you want to prove it yourself, just start from the scratch, and you will end up with this. Yes? The Q dot in the sun, in the sun was equal to 600 times the area times the observability of the plate? Correct. Okay. And that follows from the fact that if the, if the sun addition is watt per meter square. So how many really watt end up falling? Multiply by the area. And observability is just one point that taken. Right, because as... James su suspected, I guess, he suspected that reflectivity should do something. And yes, not everything full absorbed, get absorbed. Some get reflected. And I told you sometime, I actually have multiple choice in the final exam. And at one year, I told them for an opaque body, alpha plus tau is one, or alpha plus rho is one, or alpha plus tau plus one is zero. And that all those choices was basically to they can have to tell that tau is zero for an opaque surface. He will not let anything go through. And therefore, what is remaining? Rho and alpha. Either reflect or absorb. Right? 